Let's go to Brutal Hustler here. I saw Kuiper mock Kelvin Joseph to the Broncos in round two. Who is another cornerback you see Denver taking in round two? So when I think about some other potential players here, Denver, I don't know if it's like their biggest need, but when the whole mock draft process started, I, I love Caleb Farley, right? Now they went out and signed a few other players here, but my top two cornerbacks that I think make the most sense for Denver, where they are at in round two, I'll first hit here with Eric Stokes, 6'1", 185 pounder, really athletic dude, 20 tackles, four picks last year, four pass breakups. I'd rather have him than Tyson Campbell personally in terms of my Georgia cornerbacks. Another name to keep in mind that's really been shooting up draft boards, Elijah Molden, cornerback from Washington, 5'10", 190 pounds. He played in only four games last year, but 26 tackles, a pick, a pass breakup, and one tackle for a loss. If I'm the Broncos and I'm sitting here saying, okay, I have to take a cornerback in round two for whatever reason, I would look at Molden. I would look at Eric Stokes, probably being the two guys with the most upside. All right, let's go to Joel. What up, my man? Should the Broncos hold off on a quarterback and try to trade for Rodgers or Russ next year? All right, there's, there's our Russ question. So if I was Denver, would I try to hold off on a quarterback? Yes, yes, I would. As much as I don't really think Drew Locke is the answer, you still got to be able to see what he has because last year he didn't have his main guy, Cortland Sutton, and I just want to see what he can do with all his pieces there. But if I was one of the quarterbacks like a Rodgers or a Russell Wilson and I saw Cortland Sutton, K.J. Hamler, Noah Fant, and a halfway decent offensive line with the defense that they have plus Jerry Judy, that would be pretty intriguing to me. The only reason why I'd say it might not be very intriguing is you got to go up against Patrick Mahomes in that division, and that really limits your ability to, well, win the division and go to the playoffs every year. But, all right, if you guys got a question, I want you to subscribe to get on our live mailbag. So hit that big red button underneath this video here, and if you already subscribed, go to youtube.com slash chatsportstv. Join us for the NFL Draft. We will be the number one most watched draft coverage three straight years. And if you want more videos, free videos, Seriously, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. Let's go to Mike Dibble. Hey, Mitchell, who is your late round one steal? So my late round one steals, oh, boy. I think in terms of players that I think you could keep in mind, oh, boy, I'm trying to think off the top of my head here. I think Schwartz is a player, the wide receiver from Auburn. He could be a late round guy you could potentially see go. Um, the lineman from Mississippi State I think is a pretty interesting player. I'm trying to think. So, guys, I do a lot of my draft research like – in the earlier picks, a lot of the late round guys is probably a little bit more for, for Tom. So what, you mean like late round one? Oh, late round one. I'm thinking like late, like fifth, sixth, seventh round guys. All right, so late round one steals. I think Zayvon Collins is a great player to keep in mind. I think Aziz Ojalari could be a good player to keep in mind. Um, we'll see. Eric Stokes is a, another player that I'm starting to really fall in love with because of the athletic ability. Jalen Phillips, if he goes down really far, I'm not going to sit here and go Melifonwu, but I will ask you guys this question. What's the correct spelling here for, um, oh wait, I want to pronounce it right, Ifata Melifonwu. What's the correct way to spell this dude's name? Now, Obi, his older brother, he's already come out, was kind of an absolute flop in the NFL, but which is the correct way to spell Melifonwu's name here? So is it the first way, type one? Is it the second way, type two? Third, type three, type four, if you think it's the fourth. If you want to know the correct answer, you can DM me on Instagram at MitchellRance365 or just look it up on Google. All right, we got Jace. Why do some CBS mock drafts have the Stanford quarterback going in the first round? It's because all it takes is for one guy to fall in love with one certain prospect, and then they're going to see him go up. I will say this. If you're looking at CBS mock drafts, you're doing it all wrong. CBS is one of the worst companies when it comes to mock draft stuff. And you're talking about Davis Mills here, 6'4", 212-pounder from Stanford. I mean, you're talking about somebody who does, hasn't even started 15 games. Like, does he look like a prototypical quarterback? Yes, he does. But he is not going to be, I think, a very reliable starting QB. His name, he's been going up and up in boards. But if you want good mock drafts, another reason to subscribe to Chat Sports. And also, if you want a good mock draft simulator, it's PFN. All right, Robert, you're next up here. Appreciate the super chat, my dude. Mark my words. Lawrence, number one, of course. Jets get Fields at two. Niners get Jones. Bears trade up for Wilson. Lance falls on Broncos' lap at nine. Okay, I will mark your words. We will take a screenshot of this right now, and if you are right, we're gonna have, definitely going to have to give you some kudos here. So, as Sam just did, ch -ch -ch. All right, Robert, appreciate the question as always. Now, we partnered up with Newsbreak, and if anybody out there wants an awesome app on their phone, listen up right now. 
Go to chatsports.com slash newsbreak. Now, I don't care what part of the United States you live in. I don't care what city you live in. I don't care what region. It doesn't matter what your zip code is. This app will be useful for you. Now, if you want more sports content, we got you covered. If you want more, I don't know, politics, if you want to know more about pop culture, the best places to eat, the Newsbreak app is the app for you. So if you guys want to help us out and help yourself out, go to chatsports.com slash newsbreak. I'm going to put this link in the comments. It's also going to be in the description. Now, why should somebody download it? Local news and weather. You got to gotta, gotta know what's going on in your local cities, right? Politics, food, pop culture, the extra sports content, and you can find our chat sports video. So once you go ahead and download the app at chatsports.com slash newsbreak, you go to the search tool, and if you look up your favorite team, then look for the show that we run. So if you're a Cowboys fan, Cowboys Report, Raiders fan, Raiders Report, Dolphins fan, Dolphins Today, 49ers fan, 49ers. Like, we got all these awesome channels here. You can get even more content. Plus, stay up to date. What's going on in your city? Now, Burning Spades has a super chat just for producer Sam. So I'll let him unmic himself here in a second. Sam, why don't you read the question and then answer? Oh, I sip some water. As I'll, I'll throw my voice, if you will. <laughs> What's up, Brendan Spades? Appreciate the super chat. He said, uh, if the Broncos trade up with Atlanta, what would you trade? And what do you think it would take? Um, obviously, number nine. Yep. Um, probably another first next mm -hmm. year. Maybe one more and a day two pick. Definitely that day two pick. At minimum, my first offer from yep. the Broncos would be two first and a second or third this year. I agree with Sam there. I think while he looks for a new question. In general, the trade value chart, when you're moving in the top ten, especially for a quarterback, take that trade value chart and tear it up. It is not a great tool because the cost is so expensive because, in general, it means there are multiple teams trying to move up for your draft pick. So, great question there, Vernon Spades. Thank you so much for that super. From Chris Romero, who is the most overrated player in the NFL draft? Um... The guy that I have the most overrated player as relative to like everyone else is probably someone like a Gregory Rousseau. I'm not that high on Tyson Campbell, the, the Georgia corner. Underrated. Um, I like Bobby Brown from A&M a lot. I think he's a good, a good sleeper pick there. Uh, I would throw in someone like a oh, – let's, oh, let's go defense again here. I actually liked Ronnie Perkins a lot. I think I'm going to be higher on him than most people. That's the edge rusher from Oklahoma. From Stevie J, should Denver trade up for Trey Lance or Justin Fields? I say yes. Curious what producer Sam says, but I say yes. Producer Sam, behind the mic, or behind the screen, on the mic, what do you have to say? My gut tells me yes, as long as we're not giving up a ton of assets down the line, especially day one, day two picks. Those are the ones that I value a lot. Um, but, you know, for the right price, I think if you have a chance to upgrade at the position, you, I, you do what you can. I think, I think you toss the price out the window and go get Fields or Lance. I, I love yeah. both of those prospects there. Drew Locke has not been that great. So because of that, I think Denver should. And if you can get to, like, maybe seven with Detroit, I think that would be, like, the ideal trade partner. Even maybe Miami wants to move down, but I think Detroit might, might make the most sense there. That is the route I would I would prefer to go. If I were Denver, and knowing I don't have that many needs on my roster, and I can move up without giving up all of my future first-round picks, that is the route I would go. Now, as it relates to the top quarterbacks in this year's NFL draft, who do you think is the best of this uh, foursome? Of course, not including uh, Trevor Lawrence. Type ZW for Zach Wilson. JF for Justin Fields, type TL for Trey Lance, or type MJ for Mac Jones. Who do you guys want to go get? Let me know in the comments section, what player are you itching for your favorite team to go up and get? Let me know in the comments section. From Jay with, what can the Broncos do to compete next year? Get better quarterback play. And that could mean Drew Locke improves. But unless they get better quarterback play, it's not going to matter for Denver. So whether it's Locke, a rookie, somebody else, a veteran, they must get better play out of the most important position. From Timothy Mullen, 
How have the character concerns of Micah Parsons impacted his draft stock? I know it might come less come out of this questionable pass coverage. Uh, we see him similarly then. The truth of the answer is I don't know. We will find out on draft night. If Micah Parsons goes like top 10, didn't affect him. If he starts to slide a little bit, then okay. Teams had some concerns. So in general, the character concern stuff, at least for me, ends up being like a red flag of like, hey, keep this in mind, but I don't have the same information that NFL teams do as it relates to that. So because of it, it's a bit of an unknown. From Izzy World, why isn't Panay Sewell getting more love? He is the best non-quarterback prospect in the draft. I agree. I got Panay Sewell as my number two player. I, you know, his arm length is 33 inches. That's fine. That's long enough for a tackle. Um, Rashawn Slater is probably faster than him, but Sewell's also 330 pounds. He's huge. Panay Sewell dominated Pac-12 opponents at age 18 and 19. He does not turn 21 until after Kyle Pitts does. He's super young. Like, yes, he t tends to lunge sometimes. I, I love him. I am not overthinking Panay Sewell. He is a fantastic prospect. I completely agree, Izzy World. From Daniel Sharp, what is wrong with Deshaun Watson? Uh, lots of things, um, <laughs> for starters. Uh, things are not great right now for Deshaun Watson. Uh, the updates here as we sit here filming is there continue to be more and more accusations around Deshaun Watson and massage therapists, and there have been multiple lawsuits and some information has been filed with the police, allegedly, and there's just all kinds of bad things for Deshaun Watson, and there's so many of them, it doesn't look good. We'll let the, we will let the, 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 the cases in the system play itself out, but I think there's a very real chance from an NFL perspective, which is what you guys are here for, it's an NFL show, of course, that Watson is suspended on the commissioner's exempt list to open up the 2021 season. From Izzy World, which draft prospect do you think could be taken in the first round that is not a first-round talent? So, this is, this is a good, a good topic, topic here. And this is pretty on par with most of the NFL, too. There are not 32 first-round grades. Teams give out, like, maybe half of that as a pure first-round talent. That's the way that their grading systems work. That's the way mine work as well. So there are going to be a lot of players who go in round one that aren't your true first-round grades on teams' draft board, even though they'll boost it up later. Uh, the latest graded guy that I think that could go in round one, um, I could see someone like Jason Owe or a Tyson Campbell sneak into round one, and I just did not like those guys as much as I hoped I was going to. From the King, name your top five NFL fan bases. We all know you're a Cowboys fan. Okay, so if we know that, then I will leave the Cowboys out. Uh, for my own safety, I'm going to put the Raiders on there because I don't, I don't want to get killed. Uh, I want to give credit to the Browns as well because they've been bad for a long time and they still back their team very, very well. Oh, uh, let's see. I want to go. I think Seahawks fans are pretty crazy, too, in, in a good way. Uh, Saints fandom is stuck by me since the uh, Superdome Katrina game. And I need one more there for my favorite fan bases. I'm not going to do Broncos for Sam just to trigger you there. Uh, I'm not going to do Patriots fans because they annoy me as well. Uh, I will go. I'll go Chiefs. They, they've been fun lately in the end. From Rashard Lee, who are your top five quarterbacks in the NFC? All right, in no particular order, because I don't want to get anyone mad at me too much here, you have Aaron Rodgers, you have Russell Wilson. I'm going to throw in probably Tom Brady in there, at least for now. Dak Prescott is in there. And then your fifth guy is probably not Kirk Cousins, it's not Fitz, it's not Matt Ryan. Kyler Murray, Matt Stafford, somewhere there. Spooner Sam goes, Kyler Murray, duh. Murray was not good on third downs last year. Like, it was bad. Yeah, it's the most important down. Like, I think he's, it, it, I, Kyler's going to be good, but the breakout has not happened yet. At the end of next year, it might be Kyler in, in that top five. I think, I think I'd actually go Stafford or Matt Ryan would be my fifth option there. Out of these two, Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson, who do you think gets traded first? If you're like, you know what, man, I don't think either of these quarterbacks get traded first. I want you to type N for neither. 
Now, one of the things that I love to be able to do here on chat sports shows is always talk about hypotheticals. And we've done plenty of shows around Rodgers. We've done plenty of shows around Wilson. But who do you think ends up getting traded first? I'm not saying in 2021. I could be talking about 2022, 2023. Which quarterback out of Rodgers or Russell Wilson ends up getting traded first? And if you want to ask me some trade questions around Rodgers, around Wilson, remember, all you got to do is use hashtag NFL or you can super chat. If I was a betting man, I might actually go here and sit W for Wilson. 